guys, welcome back. This is part two of, um, of the video that I just did regarding new routes, buying a hub, buying the routes, and uh, building uh, or expanding uh, 168 circuits uh, using uh, the website. Um, so in the previous video, um, we had gone over um, this um, and I was, uh, I'm trying to show you, there we go. Um, so we had bought these routes right here, okay. Uh, uh, we bought these routes and then we bought a new hub in Africa, uh, F-I-H. And I just realized that when I was going over the other video, I was talking about uh, auditing this hub and how in my case it showed zero I didn't have to pay for it um, and I was referencing I brought up another Excel sheet uh, uh, I do apologize I realized that it was not showing what I was trying to show you and that's this right here so this right here is what I was bringing up and um, this tells me my gross price that's if assuming you have zero subs so if you're new to the game um, your subsidies at the hub level would be high okay so uh, this is sticker price this is a full-blown full price if you wanted to pay for the hub but if you do have subsidies left uh, at the hub level you're gonna you're not gonna pay this you're gonna pay uh, a lot less so that's a good thing um, this is my taxes this is the cat of the airport um, and then the database, uh, the database sheet I have for all the hubs was done on the web. So when you do an audit at the hub level on the website of the airliners uh, tycoon, um, they don't give you the bars. Okay, so unlike in the application, um, you get the bar you know it kind of gives you a bar scenario of how big it is of, of what's what in the web it actually gives you a percentage so this is the percentages that you're looking at and you can see here that um, it's not exactly an MPM hub but it is in Africa so even though my economy is telling me 34 percent uh, economy and then business is three and then first is not even one uh, that's not surprising um, but you know economy is not too bad and you guys saw that when we were doing when when I was buying these routes right here okay um, you guys saw the uh, the economy demands I'm gonna show that to you here in a minute uh, they weren't bad. They were in the 4,500 to 5, 5,500 range. Uh, so nothing to complain about. Um, I think we do get a little spoiled when you do uh, uh, do things in uh, MPM or C uh, CGK, you know, these very high uh, uh, economy hubs. And then you go do another hub that's not that. It's not as, it's not as high and so we do get a little spoiled with that so it's not that big a deal but um, um, this is this is uh, this is uh, what we bought the, uh, in the other video so uh, now I'm going to show you my process this is how I do things in my game um, if you do things a little bit different when you play that's fine to each his own you do work uh, you build your airline the way you're comfortable I'm simply showing you the way I'm doing it for me. Um, labeling is a very big uh, thing, uh, especially if you have a huge airline with a lot of planes. Um, I have uh, experimented with other types of labeling, you know, like n uh, numbering schemes, uh, days, you know. Uh, this seems to work for me the best. And the reason why you want to label, especially when you're doing a 168, and you're doing a lot of them is that it's easy to troubleshoot a problem when something happens so you guys saw earlier that I had uh, in my can hub here's my can hub 
and I was just looking at all my hubs the other day and I noticed I was looking at here and I saw all these reds on all these routes and I'm like what the hell just happened you know I get it I mean I might have maybe a couple that are like maybe 10 or 20 that's okay I mean those are easy to fix but I mean when you get over like 200 or 300 something is wrong something is definitely wrong you might have a route in there that you accidentally put in twice I've done that a lot but it was easy for me to find because of the labeling uh, and I'm going to show that to you here in a minute um, so uh, anyway this is all fixed now but I did ma I did have to just completely redo it I got mad and I pulled everything out and I redid all the routes again so everything was nice and neat um, I, I can't explain I don't know if what I had done but uh, I did screw that up so uh, because I pulled everything out uh, at, at that hub my uh, SP took a hit which is what will happen if you start yanking stuff out your uh, uh, your structural profit will take a dive because you're no longer flying those routes anymore but I'm going to tell you right now if you have routes uh, let me go back to cam here if you have routes that have red negatives on any of your demands um, that means that um, you don't have enough people on that plane to fill it up so you're essentially flying that plane empty okay that plane is flying with empty with with empty seats it's a ghost plane and so now you're just wasting fuel so I mean you know it, this, what's funny is that my can hub is a is a billion dollar hub it's a couple billion dollar hub so I had just happened to be just trolling my other hubs just to see what was going on um, and when I went to the can hub I saw all these reds in there and I got so upset I yanked everything out and then I redid it um, so um, so let's get to this uh, new hub that we just bought what we're gonna do like I said I'm gonna show you how I do it so I bought the hub I bought the routes now I'm ready to start planning stuff okay usually what I will do and this is me and this is and I'm gonna show you some other things while I'm doing this just so you know how things work on the web versus the app okay so uh, full disclosure here I really don't use the web that much uh, except to um, uh, except to buy my planes in bulk and um, to um, and to label my planes I find it very easy so and then of course you have the mass management right here uh, the mass management allows you to move planes in bulk from one hub to another it also allows you to sell your planes in bulk um, you can do that on the app but you can only do one at a time so if you got a bunch of them you want to get rid of it's better if you just come to the online now real quick here coming to the online uh, be aware that there is two unique URLs for tycoon and professional um, I am in my tycoon account right now so you can see here that it does have tycoon dot airliners airlines dash manager and then if I went to my professional account and I have this bookmarked already and if I came here and I went to my pro you can see that it doesn't have any and now this one comes up in French uh, by default so I have to do English here on my browser so um, so that's in there and you can see that um, um, the the URL is completely different so this is professional and then this is tycoon so just be careful with that I didn't catch that when I first started playing this uh, I was just looking to see what the professional one. in fact when I first started playing uh, uh, airlines manager I thought professional was a paid version 
of the same thing. I just thought it was completely different. You had to pay uh, to, to play this game. But it turns out that Professional and Tycoon are almost the same for about, about 95% of the time. The only difference is that Tycoon is accelerated times seven and Professional is in real time. So I'm actually glad I started playing Tycoon first because I definitely would have lost interest in the professional being that it is in, um, um, in real time. I would have gotten bored. So now that I have a pretty big airline in, the, um, in Tycoon, I kind of know what's going on. I don't mind playing professional now because I can always toggle back and forth while things are happening in professional in real time, I can still play my tycoon and keeps my mind occupied. So, uh, in any case, uh, right now I do have uh, uh, we just bought that, that new hub with the routes. Uh, I don't have any planes in that hub yet. So what I'm going to show you is is that I do have planes um, in my can hub. So I'm going to show you how to find that out. And when I label my planes by default, I label them based on model because it's easy to bring up. So there is a model plane. And then I'll go to my negative usage. And then, um, and then I'll go ahead and just do this to can. Uh, it's somewhere on here. And so um, now it's going to give me a list of all my planes that I don't have in use. And you can see that 0%. Um, and now what I can do is that now that I know I do have planes available, you'll notice I do have quite a bit sitting in the delivery. I don't deliver them until I need them. Uh, because if you, deliver, if you go ahead and confirm them or deliver them, Remember, you get employees assigned to that plane, so now you're having to pay their salary. So, just a little tip: if you're ma if you're ordering massive amount of planes, uh, deliver them when you need them. Uh, that way, you don't have to pay so much. I'm I am going to eventually deliver them, but I just don't need them right right now. Um, so, what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit this mass management, and I'm going to move seven, I'm going to go ahead and move 21 of those planes into the new hub that we just bought. So I'm going to go ahead and tap on mass management. Uh, that's going to come up. This, what would this bring up? will bring up all your hubs that you have. And then uh, there is our new hub right here. And of course I have absolutely nothing. It does say I have 10 routes. I'm only going to use six of them for now uh, for this video example. Um, and then uh, we'll go ahead and put those guys in the air. And so let me look for can. There's can right there. And you can see here um, um, what I will then do is that I'll go ahead and hit hub management. Um, and then that will bring up this window. You got to give it a few seconds uh, for it to just come up. Um, one thing about this, okay, here it is. It says 175 inactive aircraft okay um, so now I can expand on this okay and uh, you'll notice that these are in maintenance right now I am running a check on them uh, one thing to be aware of if you want to sell your planes um, you cannot sell your planes while it's in a maintenance mode uh, whether it's doing an A check or a D check you can't you can't put that you can't sell it Another thing too is that if that plane is in the air, if it's in the middle of flight, you cannot sell it either. Um, the easiest way to uh, to sell planes, uh, if you're like going to decommission um, some routes or something like that, is to simply go to the airplane itself and then just remove all the routes, and then give it a give it about an hour for it to do its thing. Remember, if you're in Tycoon, that process is going to happen pretty fast. Um, that way the plane goes and comes back and it lands back at its home base at that hub. So while the plane is in the air, you, you really can't do anything. Um, so what I'm going to do is that normally 
I would go ahead and select um, I could go ahead and just say you know what put all the planes at the new hub okay and and then just go to uh, to the bottom here and then just go ahead and just hit and go ahead and hit it um, I'm not going to do that I'm actually going to just move just a few planes just for the sake of the video and I'll do one two uh, gotta remember this is a new uh, hub so I'm not from I I'm not used to the to the uh, airport code yet but I will be once I start putting stuff in it so that's one two three four five six seven I'll tell you what I'm just gonna go ahead and just do seven my intention was was to go ahead and move all 21 but I'm, I'm eventually gonna do that so I've got my seven planes here selected from one hub this is one thing that I don't like about this screen here is that I wish the the button for confirmation was up here it's not it's actually on the very bottom so gotta go all the way to the bottom and there it is approve modifications and you can see it says all zeros I'm not selling a rod I'm not selling the plane I'm simply moving some airplanes over so you can see here it does give me that moved aircraft of seven and then I'll hit confirm okay so uh, I have that in there and it's done uh, it will give you a little blurb of jobs added or removed that's uh, you don't have no control over that that's just what happens uh, but that's fine I'm gonna use those people anyway so now that I've moved now I can come back to my airplane and this is where I use the web for the second thing uh, I use the web here to label my planes and I'll go ahead and put 200 and then use and then um, and then go ahead and select my hub and this should only show me seven planes that are labeled 747 200 okay and there they are so there's one two three four five six seven and there they all are this is where I like to label the planes why because I find it to be extremely easy and faster to do it here uh, versus on the app you can obviously do it on the app but there's a lot of jumping around and because this is a game that's based off of a server and if you do this on the PC um, it's actually pretty fast I mean once you get used to it um, then you kind of get the idea so this is how I label my planes I've got seven planes and my labeling is FIH which is the hub and then this is my first uh, this is my first 168 remember this is new I don't have nothing on it yet and then this is my first wave and then this is my Monday plane so here's where it gets easier versus the app I can right click and then do a copy paste here and then um, this is gonna be my Tuesday and I'm so used to doing this I do this for all my planes um, it just becomes second nature now after a while I know a lot of you guys like to use numbers some of you role play you like to use actual registrations um, whatever works I mean if is I suppose if you're um, if you got everything documented I guess that works um, I could have used just one through seven instead of the actual day of you know like me spelling out the name of the day but it's just easier for me to just know that oh that's my Friday plane um, so this is Saturday and then this is Sunday now here's the cool thing when I get ready to put my next wave on it um, when I get ready to put my next wave I just come back over here and it tells me what I've used already so it remembers what naming naming convention you've used in the past and then all you gotta do is just fill in the, the, the last three days so if I put another wave that number will simply be two 
and then three and then four and so on so that's kind of how I do it and once I've labeled my planes I'm done um, I don't really that's the this is the only spot that I use the, the the website for for ordering planes as well so if I wanted to order planes remember on the app um, I can only buy 30 planes at a time on the app because that's the maximum discount you'll get so it stops at 30 but if you order planes online um, you can um, order up to 99 now I don't order 99 I do it in divisions of 7 7, 20, uh, 7, 21, 28, 32, 84 uh, the highest number I buy is 84 because I know those are divisions of 7 so um, but like I said to each his own you can do that um, once you uh, find your airplane that you want to use you can come over here and say you know I want to order 21 of them um, and you get all your info right here and then when you hit buy um, it's gonna toggle you to your configuration now this is something that I've re that I submitted as a request that if we can reconfigure planes on a massive scale um, so um, and you can see here that I'm maxing this out to economy which is 300 10 tons is the max on the cargo and then what I do is that I like to default it as a simple uh, name and then I go back and then I just put my name uh, whatever I need so I label all the airplanes the same because this will tell me a little easier what planes I'm not using okay um, it's easy for me to find and then of course you have your hubs over here where you want to send them um, and that's how you order planes I'm not going to order them I obviously have a whole bunch here waiting in queue uh, I just haven't delivered them yet and then I would confirm my purchase and then I'm, that's it that's good uh, I'm done um, and that's how you uh, order planes in mass so uh, like I said you can order up to um, you can order up to 99 of them um, but usually you know like I said personally I do it to uh, 84 uh, that's the max number and um, uh, let's see when I was messing with can I wanted to show you that I did take a hit on my on my rank it was 150 uh, somewhere around there was somewhere around 150 and then I pulled all those routes out remember I was telling you when I was trying to fix something and I screwed that up so um, I knew I was going to take a hit on that so that'll come back up because I'm already putting the routes back all right so now let's go to uh, the app so here is uh, we're back on the on the iPad okay so we've got my seven planes uh, they're labeled they're ready to go and so now I'm ready to put these guys in the air and put them uh, make them a 168 I'm only gonna do one wave but you kinda get the idea so now come over here now this is me what I do is I like to hit this guy come to my air now everybody does this different right most people will come over here to their routes and then look for whatever oh well let's look at the routes that we bought just so you can see here and obviously this is zero I don't have nothing on it um, and there they are so there are my demands I'm gonna easily put at least at least four waves on here I'm gonna try to squeeze four waves on here uh, the plane I'm using is uh, is the 742 so that seats 507 uh, 595 seats that number times two is I believe 1190 so we'll take that number and then I'll divide that with the 59 with the with the demands here and that'll tell me how many waves I can put but I'm thinking at, at, at the very minimum at least three I'm thinking possibly four uh, Mexico City is borderline so is uh, Seoul because that's uh, 49 and this is 46 but we'll see what's left and I'll show you an easy way to keep an eye on the demands remaining okay so let me get out of here and now I'm gonna hit my airplane what I do is I hit aircraft my aircraft 
And then I won't even play, man. I'm just going to go IFH. Um, I think that's what the... Um, um, I F H. Oh no, F I H. Okay, and so there they are. And then what I'll do is I'll also just do one one because that will just show me my seven planes. And you can see there, my labeling shows me. So I want to hit my master plane, which is going to be Monday. And then I'm going to start uh, scheduling. Uh, based uh, on my routes so that first one was uh, schedule was um, very bottom this is kind of easy because I don't have a lot of routes uh, this is something else that I've also requested is a search bar in this drop-down I hate doing this man when you get a busy hub and you got looking for something here and you're doing this you know you're having to scroll down through a whole bunch of them you know you gotta be careful with that. Oh, by the way, another thing too to notice: remember, if you already have a route going to this destination, you cannot buy the route going the other way. Remember, flights are two directions, going and coming. So, uh, PVG is my first route that I bought, along with everything else on top. But if you'll notice underneath PVG I have PAP and I have CGK and now you know to someone that's playing this for the first time they're new to it and they're looking at that and they're like I don't remember buying PAP I don't remember buying CGK why is that in there well that's because I have a hub at CGK and I also have a hub at PAP guess where I'm routing from there to FIH so that comes up here the other direction so one thing you'll notice because I've done this by accident just because I wasn't paying attention so if I do if uh, this route right here that's my first route okay and then let's say I accidentally did this <coughs> excuse me you'll notice it says FIH to CGK it will let me put that in there but it's not going to do anything because I'm already I already have a hub at CGK and I'm going to FIH already so this will flip on you when you, once I finish the schedule it will say on this schedule it will say CGK to FIH and you're like wait what's going on with that and that's because it's a hub you already have okay so just watch out for that usually on this drop down the the routes that you already own coming the other direction is going to be at the very bottom okay and you can tell by the percentages you can look at that 86 percent and 84 you know this is a brand new hub i don't have anything here so uh so my first route is pvg okay and uh you can see there that's going to put that there and then the next one is um is i believe mexico okay Mexico now real quick here I'm gonna show you something to just be aware of I'm gonna put this route right here but I'm gonna keep my finger down and I want you to notice the route the, the, the green numbers on top okay so how you read that okay um, the route for Mexico was 4982 so now it's telling me coming back it's gonna be 3792 and that's how you read that. Remember, the routes are, are two-way. So even though if you look at the right side of that top banner, you've got your demands and then you see the airplane. You'll notice the seat count says 595. So it's going to send 595 one way, and then it's going to send 595 coming back. And that's how you read these numbers. So remember, your routes are always two-way. A lot of people don't pick up on that in the, in the beginning because you're learning. I get that. That's normal. But then when you don't pick up on that, then you look at your demands, and they're like these negative reds that are real high numbers because you keep adding planes, or excuse me, you keep adding routes to a plane that's, that doesn't have any more demand. And so now your plane is flying empty. So... Um, 
So that's in there, and now I'm going to do uh, the next route was uh, um, uh, Peck. That's in there. And then the next one was CIN, or ICN, excuse me. And then Hong Kong. After a while, when you do this so many times, you get pretty fast at this. So, And then the last one was PKX. And then there it is. There is a 168 because it's completely full. This plane is 100% utilized. Now, what I'm going to do is that you see on the bottom of the screen, it says copy schedule. Okay. Remember, I have, this is my Monday plane. So now I'm going to dump this schedule in Tuesday through Sunday planes. But I'm going to offset it by 24 hours. So that way, PGV now leaves on Tuesday and then, the, and then so on. That way, it leaves every single day on a plane. And that way, um, your demands go down nice and smooth So all week. So I'll hit copy schedule here. And this is actually going to be easy because I don't have anything here. This is pretty straightforward. I usually do use. And um, so I have them in order here. Now, one thing to just, just as a side note, um, it's showing me my planes in, in nice and neat and in order, Tuesday through Sunday. Okay, when you have a big hub and you're doing this, don't hold on, don't hold on to that. Sometimes they're scrambled. Okay, you might have Tuesday and Wednesday, and then you got to scroll down and look for Wednesday and Thursday, or uh, Thursday and Friday. So sometimes they're not all over, sometimes they're not in order like you see here. Sometimes they're scrambled. I just want to point that out because, um, you know, some people are like, well, where's my Thursday plane? It's, I made a, I labeled it for Thursday and it's not on here. It's on there, you gotta look for it. So uh, in this case, it's kinda easy because um, it's the only routes that I had. So now I have all four, all six of them checked. Um, and now, uh, now gotta remember the, the way you sequence this out, you gotta be careful, take your time, don't rush through it till you get used to it. Remember, this is my Monday plane uh, you don't see Monday on this list here because Monday is at the very top. See where it says Monday on the very top? So I'm going to I'm gonna move this, schedule the shift 24 hours for Tuesday, two days for Wednesday, three for Thursday, four for Friday, and then you kind of got the idea, five and six, okay? So there you'll notice that the scheduling shift just happens to be designed for a 168. You don't see seven day, eight day, nine day. It only goes up to six, including your master plane. So this schedule tool right here, which is very handy, is designed for a 168. Now, another thing I wanted to point out when I hit confirm, you'll get this pop-up box here and this is where you kind of look at it make sure you're you know everything is lined up okay this is why you label things so you can uh, easily identify uh, your planes uh, uh, for your 168 okay now you'll notice that mine came up nice and neat Tuesday through Sunday uh, I'm gonna do something here on purpose I'm gonna go back out of this and I'm gonna do copy schedule again this time I'm going to do this different. So I'm going to go ahead and do use, and then let's say I start Sunday and then Saturday, right? This doesn't change. This is still six day. This is still the fifth day. And then I decide, oh, this one's 24, this one's two, this one's three, this one's four. Okay, it still comes up on this window the way it's going to go. I just want you to be aware of something because sometimes people don't pick up on this and they get a little nervous. When you hit confirm, notice how it pops up on this screen. It's still going to go the way it's supposed to. 
the reason it's coming up like this is because this is the way you started the schedule. Okay, so just be aware of that. Um, so try not to get a little nervous when you see that. It's simply because um, it's going to do the Sunday because I did Sunday first. Well, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. If I do them in order of the check marks, and then I go ahead and just do my do my thing here, um, they will come up and nice and neat in order. So I just wanted to point that out to you um, because sometimes I get new players that uh, that will uh, shoot me a message. And um, and it's like no no it, everything's okay it's just the way you check mark them you didn't start you didn't your first check mark wasn't on Tuesday it was like on Friday or something but as long as you have that schedule shift on the far right corner that does matter I've actually done this uh, one time see that right there that's no bueno what's gonna happen here is that it's gonna dump. Uh, those routes twice for those two planes and that's how I got those red negatives that I showed you in can I must have did this by accident and I didn't catch it um, and um, so you might want to you know when you get to here you know just take your time it's not a race just make sure you got everything lined up um, the way it's supposed to uh, this is actually very similar in the web version I, I have seen uh, some of the other uh, players that they don't actually use the app. They use the web. Um, the high-ranking players, you know, in professional, remember professionals real time, so they've been playing this game for years. Um, remember the web came out first and then the app. So they only know the web. They're real good at it. So I've seen a couple of their videos on it. I'm still getting used to that, but I'm still very comfortable using the application on the iPad, so, um, but that's just me. Uh, so now I'll hit confirm Wednesday through Sunday. I'll hit validate, and then I get my little pop-up saying everything is cool, and then I'll hit OK to that, and then hit finish here, and then that way I can find out when they're going to take off. So, <coughs> excuse me. So these, uh, that first wave is going to start in 43 minutes. So this is something else that I always do, and I come to my planes, aircraft, and then uh, I'll come to um, uh, FIH. Oh, this is perfect. I'm glad it did this. This is what. This is why I check. What do you notice here, right? So I have my first wave here. Okay there's clearly a route missing. Now you'll notice that Monday says 100%. Well, of course it does. I did that manually. I didn't use the schedule. I, we did that together uh, when I added the route. So my Monday plane is going to be at 100%. But you'll notice that the six other planes say 81%. That tells me that uh, there is at least one route that's, that got missed. Sometimes that happens, guys. So that's because the server just lags. It had a hiccup, and it didn't catch it. Um, so you can always tap on, say, uh, I'm going to tap on my Friday plane, and then I'll hit schedule, and then I'll hit any route. It doesn't matter. And sure enough, there it is. Now, you can manually put this in, or you can do what I do. When you get to the screen right here, you can clearly see that there's something missing. Hit your Monday plane again. Just hit Monday again. Hit the schedule. Hit any route. It doesn't matter because you want to bring up the schedule. And then hit copy schedule again. Basically run it again. Just re rerun it. Okay. Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. 24, 2, 3, four, five, and then six. Okay? So all I'm doing is that I'm just rerunning this again, and what the, sir, uh, what the game is going to do is simply going to rewrite everything again. So I'll confirm. There are my routes. Everything is fine. Hit validate. Congrats. Okay. And then this comes up. Make sure you hit finish. 
and uh, just hit OK, and then go back to your aircraft. It's kind of a little bit of a pain, but you know what? Doing this uh, will save you the frustration because, and there they are, everything is good now, 100%. So here is why you want to do this now. If you had not checked this and you kept moving forward, with adding planes and, or excuse me, adding planes and doing more 168s, remember you're going to see an offset on your demands and you're going to think, oh, I can put another plane on there. When, excuse me, when you really can't, you're basically putting a plane on another 168 that should be on this wave. You see what I'm saying? So, it's always good to make sure that you check, make sure everything is 100% um, and you're good to go. So now normally what I would do is I would close this out and then if I had the other planes in there, I would go ahead and hit, I would come back here and then I would actually do uh, FIH1-2. I will do a second wave and do it again. And then I would probably do, well, you guys saw the demands, I could probably do maybe three or four waves. And that's how it's done. Um, now, here is one thing that's cool. Uh, when you do have everything set up, and um, uh, let's see, let me go to, what is my latest one? Uh, let's see. I just... Uh, we can go to Palm. How about Palm? And then you can see here I have some demands remaining. Here's where that Russian plane comes in real handy. Look at this one. So you start looking at anything over 600. Remember the, the Russian plane handles um, 300 seats, but remember it's really 600. 300 going, 300 coming. So really you're looking for demands for 600 and more so what I'm going to show you here is how to fix some red negatives and let me see do I have any at IU? I guess not no guess not oh there we go here's one here this one's the negative 33 okay now this now this hub is very unique this this hub is using all Russian planes because uh, just FYI if you want to know where this is at um, this is this little guy here in the Pacific that's this hub right here um, that's this guy right here um, because of its classification the lowest plane I can use a 747-300 or I can use the Russian 96300. I opted for the for the 300 um, because um, I just thought it'd be nicer. It's it's a very profitable plane um, because of the seat count. It's very it's a very cheap plane. It's got decent demands, uh, or excuse me, it has a decent um, what do you call it uh, range. Um, so this entire hub. Uh, at this, uh, at this is uh, all Russian planes. Okay, so and you see how they're all just following each other. So let me come back here, and we had that one that was negative 33. So let's go ahead and fix it. And this is why you want. Uh, I have another one that's 33, 31. Okay, that's fine. Yeah, we can fix that one. Okay, so one thing about doing 168s on seven on seven planes, it doesn't matter if you're doing six routes or seven routes, as long as you're using seven planes. Okay, is right here where you go to the uh, oh not there, um, yeah it's it's right here. So you'll notice that I have a minus 33. Okay, so I want to make sure that this night, I already know that it's 33 all week. I'm just showing you. 
but you want to make sure that this guy is the same all week because if I zero that out it might be zeroed out just for say Monday but then it goes back negative 33 for uh, for Tuesday because you're not running a 168 on that route you've, you've, you're running a weird route and and you got this MIA flight going multiple times in one day this is why this is why a lot of high-ranking players and myself say, no, nah, don't do that. Use a, Try to have seven, six or seven routes on seven planes going out because it, it brings down your demands uh, um, uh, evenly. So now I've got NEG 33 on there, and I know that um, that is all weak, so it's easy for me to just do this. So here is how you fix that. Monday, I'll tap on Monday, and you can clearly see that I'm running this on, I'm running this particular route uh, four times. Okay? I'm running it three times on 168 number 11, and then I'm running it one more time for 16. Okay? So what I'm going to do is that in order for me to zero this out, what I will do is that um, I will take 33, and I'm going to divide that by 2. Why am I dividing that by 2? Because the trips are round trip. Okay, so I'm going to take 33, and then I am going to, and that divided by 2 is 16.5. Okay, now I, I, I have a calculator in my hand, so I'm doing it this way. Um, but, you know, take out your calculator. Divide 33 into 2. It comes out to 16.5. Now, one thing I'm going to tell you, always round up. So if it's 16.5, assume 17. Because if you do 16, you're going to have a minus negative 1. So I would ha rather have a plus 1 than a negative 1. Okay? Um, so now I'm just simply going to take 300 and minus 17, and that number right here will be 283, okay? And what I'll do is that I'll offset the difference and put nine people in business class. Why not? Okay? It's not a lot. So I'll hit validate hit OK to that, okay, and then there it is, it went to 1, okay, um, now if I go back again, you'll notice the bar, it's very subtle, but if you look at the bar very closely, it went down just slightly, what I need to do now is to go to Tuesday and do the same thing here, okay, so I'll put 280, 283 here, and then I'll go to Wednesday, do the same thing here, and so on and so on and so on. Okay. And then when I go back, when I'm done, this 33 will say zero. Now, I zero, I did a plus one already on the Monday plane. You saw me do that. You're probably wondering, Frank, why is it say negative 33 still? Because the day of the tycoon of this is what day? I don't even know. Let's look at it. Ah, oh, that's why. Look at the bottom of the screen. It says Friday. And that's why. So technically, if we went back, uh, just to prove my point here, I'll go to IAUE. We already know it's MIA. And now I'll hit typical week, Friday. And then I'll change this to 283. 283. Yes. Come on. So now that should be 1. You see it's at the very bottom. It says 1. Okay. And now I'll go back. And there's my 1. Okay. Because Tycoon and Tycoon Day, it's, it's Friday. It wasn't Monday. 
So that's why I wasn't showing it. Now, I'm going to do that for the entire week, of course. But I just wanted to show you how to do that. Okay? So, um, and that's how we do that, guys. So I obviously have a lot of work to do for the new hub that we just got. Um, let's see. While I'm here. Let's see, today is um, Wednesday the 30th. We just got, well, <laughs> you, you guys saw that new, um, what was it, latest info, the Gazette. <coughs> I got the, I got the research dollars. Yeah, I only have one thing in my uh, research. Um, and this one is, uh, where is that guy? I think it's under general. No, it's actually under aircraft. Way over here. I need that last one. <laughs> that one's not cheap. I'm getting there. I'm at 19 billion. But, um, yeah. Oh, well. It is what it is, right, guys? So, anyway, uh... That's what I was going to show you, so I'm going to put some more waves on there. Um, if you have any questions, just ask. Um, shoot me a message. I uh, hope this was informative to you, for you guys. I'd like to thank you for watching. We'll talk to you guys later. Bye.